Okay, so uh, the way we teach uh, Cournot typically in, in uh, introductory microeconomics and the way it's also uh, taught in, in this book is by uh, using functions and, and uh, finding best response functions. So, so quantity is a continuous variable. Yeah, choose to produce you know, one ton, 1.1, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but to help with the intuition, uh, and to draw the analogy to uh, game theory, uh, it can be useful to also look at the Cournot game uh, as a uh, in a payoff matrix, okay? normal form of a game. So here, um, it's a standard game. We can think there are two players, firm A and firm B. They each have a set of strategies, uh, produce one, two, or three tons for each of them. Uh, and there are payoffs, profits, uh, that depend both on what the player is choosing herself and on what the other player is choosing. Okay, So it's, it's, a, it's a game, in that sense. Um, and it's played one shot, and it's played non-cooperatively. So looking at these payoffs, you could say, well, um, some reflection would say, well, the highest Joint payoffs uh, are given on the diagonal here. Uh, when, and for instance, uh, an equal um, split of those uh, highest payoffs would be associated with a quantity of, of two for each firm. So each firm would then be getting 10. OK, is, is that an equilibrium in this, in this game? Uh, no. So put ourselves in the shoes of firm A first. If it believes that firm B is producing two tons, what's its uh, best response to that? Well, that's 12, marking uh, uh, the optimal choice there in, in some way. OK? If we're looking at firm B, contrast, uh, if it believes that firm A is producing two tons, what's its best response? Well, the best response of firm B, then, would be 12, comparing the payoffs. 12, 10, and 6. Okay. Uh, and similarly, we can walk through the, the game here. So I guess start in, in um, firm A, um, with firm A here. So if it believes that B would be producing one ton, well, A compares payoffs A, 12, and 15. 15 is highest. If A believes that B will be producing three tons, it compares 5, 6, and 8. Eight being the highest. Uh, okay, now walk over, <clears throat> put ourselves in the shoes of firm B. If it believes or believes, but you know, just walking through this this payoff matrix, if A were to produce uh, one ton, uh, well, B would be comparing eight, twelve, to fifteen. Fifteen is highest, so three tons would be um, the chosen strategy there. Uh, two. If A produces two tons, we've already solved for that. And now if um, A were to produce three tons, well, B would be comparing the payoffs five, six, and eight. Okay, So here we have two underlying strategies. We have uh, what we call a Nash equilibrium. Okay, So a set of strategies where none of the firms, none of the players um, would want to unilaterally deviate from this. So you know, if they could jointly agree, they would prefer to be here. But uh, in the non-cooperative game, it's a dominant strategy for them uh, to each produce three tons. Okay, So that's the Cournot equilibrium, or Nash in quantities, as we would also say. <laughs>